Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. For this week's video, I thought I'd do a little paint and chat video where I feature this month's exclusive art for my patrons on my Patreon page. This is the last day of the month and your very last chance to get this digital print at $5 and an exclusive hand embellished print of this mailed to you at the $10 and $20 tiers. I'll show you what the gold hand embellished design looks like at the end of the video. If you're interested in painting along or coloring along with me during this video, you can pause here and go get your digital line art for, of this drawing and color along with me. Any patron at any tier starting at just $1 can download this as a coloring page and the exclusive prints are only available for June patrons, but the line art will always be available for you to download and color even if you're watching this in the future. I also wanted to quickly mention that if you would like to purchase this print, it will eventually be up in my shop. I'll leave a link down below in the description when I have it up, but the digital and hand embellished prints are only available for June patrons. Okay, now that that's all out of the way, I wanted to talk a little bit more about this piece. So I had wanted to do another painting of some cute animals that I hadn't painted or drawn before. And I was in between otters and sloths. <laughs> and I decided to go over to my Patreon and ask my patrons, as well as people on Twitter, what they wanted me to do next. And everyone who voted on Patreon wanted to see otters, so here they are. <laughs> This was a really fun design to make. I really wanted to do two cute otters that are floating in the water with a little bit of a foliage type of frame around them that had a little bit more detail. Uh, I really like doing these sort of ornate designs as frames where that is kind of the outside of the piece. Instead of a harsh line, you have these drawn details that create the frame um, and I like that sort of design. So as you can see I've already put down a sort of green underpainting on everything except the otters themselves. I wanted to make sure that both the water and the greenery all had a very similar tone and so a really good way to do that is do an underpainting of one wash over the entire thing. So I did a very light green color over everything and then I'm now going in with uh, details and different colors to add on top of this wash. I started painting some of the larger leaves and now I'm going in and making uh, the water by adding a lot of actual water to the painting and dropping in colors. You've seen me do this in a lot of my other paintings and I'm just kind of doing wet into wet on all of this, all of these areas. And I wanted to quickly mention what materials I'm using. As always, all of the materials will be listed down below in the description, but I'll give them a quick mention while I'm chatting with you guys. So I am using a piece of Canson XL watercolor paper. I use this a lot. It's really affordable and you can find it at stores like Michael's and things like that. And I use that a lot with my work, at least right now, as I work on my skills and I'm painting a lot. I'm going through a lot of paper. I also wanted to mention that the watercolors I'm using are all 
the Winsor & Newton Cotman brand, which the Cotmans, I believe, are the student grade watercolors. And you can see the palette to the left here. These are all uh, colors that I bought when I took my first watercolor class. I purchased six different colors, a warm and a cool version of the three primaries, red, yellow, and blue. And I have a few other colors on my palette that I might have mixed in here and there that are a combination of a few different brands like Grumbacher and I believe I have a Da Vinci color. And I've just sort of inherited these throughout the years and added them to my palette. So I have a little bit of a mixture of various paints and brands. But the Cotman's are the student grade watercolor and I am noticing more and more as I work with them that I feel like I'm outgrowing them a little bit with the work that I'm doing and I feel like I am wanting to upgrade to something that's a little bit more pigmented, probably something that is more of an artist grade watercolor that has more of a bright color to it. Um, I realized at the end of this painting that it just wasn't as bright as I was hoping it would be and I think a lot of my style and the kinds of colors I like to use, I'm going in that direction where I want something a little bit more pigmented and more saturated in uh, the hues. So I am hoping to eventually invest in some new brands of watercolors. I've been looking at the Mission Gold um, brand of watercolors as well as the Dr. P.H. Martin's those are more of a concentrated watercolor and I know a lot of other YouTubers use both of those brands and I have been looking at various reviews and things like that and I am planning on investing on those once I get the funds for them. And a lot of what will help me get there are people that are helping me out on my Patreon. So if you're interested in seeing me upgrade and use some different brands of watercolors and maybe even do some reviews on them, please consider heading over to my Patreon. The brand of watercolor brushes that I am using are the Princeton uh, synthetic watercolor brushes. They are the sizes 10 and 4 that I use for this painting. I use the 10 sort of as a wash um, brush <laughs> and the 4 for a lot of these little details you see here. Um, and something that I have learned over the years of painting is whenever possible you want to use the largest brush you can um, while still getting into the details that you need. So I try to go as large as possible that and using um, these round brushes that have a finer tip to them. And using that will help you to cover a lot more ground in your paintings while still being able to get into details. And so kind of going as large as you can while still feeling comfortable and that you're able to control both the pigments as well as the water. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> if you guys want me to talk more about that in a future video, let me know. But that is something that I try to work on. And so I typically will use a size six for most of my paintings because I can get some really good large portions of a painting done while still being able to get into some finer details. And then for things like if you see on the left here, those little leaves and smaller details like that, I'll go in with a very fine brush or if I'm doing line work or something like that. But for the most part, I like to stick with at most two brushes that I'm using. I feel like that just gets the job done a lot quicker and doesn't impede my 
creative flow when I am sitting down to do a painting or if I'm inspired to draw or do a painting. I don't want the tools to get in my way, especially if I feel some inspiration sparking. I want to just sit down and paint or sit down and draw. And that's my best advice for knowing what sort of brands to invest in or what kind of tools to get. Don't go overboard with all your options. You know, start with a few different tools and you want to really refine those into something where you can just pick up and go and kind of get into your creative flow. I also want to mention that I did use a Copic multi-liner in cobalt blue for the line work for this. I wanted something where you could see the line work and it was easy for me to just put my paints down within these lines, but I wanted something a little softer, so I went with this blue and I recently got these Copic multi-liners in a set of Copic markers that I bought and I have really been loving them. So here I am taking off the tape that I put down to help the paper from buckling too much, which there's a little bit, but not too bad. And here is the finished piece. And I selected some areas to paint with gold paint. And here I have an example of one of the prints that has gold detailing on it that I hand painted. So this is what you will receive if you are a patron for this month. Again, today is the last day to receive this at the 10 or $20 tiers. And that is it. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, I hope you have a creatively fulfilled day. Bye guys.